Now, after completing its 5 billion kilometre mission, a space capsule crashed down in outback South Australia yesterday, delivering the first ever subsurface sample of an asteroid back to Earth. Reporter Sarah Mullins was there as the probe made its fiery return. She's very excited about covering the story. She joins <laughs> us now from Woomera. Sarah, hey, g'day. Take us through what happened over the weekend. You're right, Michael. It's been a phenomenal couple of days up here in Outback, South Australia. We travelled up to Coober Pedy. That was the best spot to view the landing. We went to a local family's home. Uh, they live in dugout uh, underground caves up in Coober Pedy because of the heat and the mining up there. We climbed up onto their roof and at just four, uh, two minutes to four, the space capsule entered the Earth's atmosphere. It was travelling at 12 kilometres a second and that created a fireball effect. It soared across the sky for about 20 seconds. It was beautiful. I was expecting it to look more like a shooting star, but it was something out of a Star Wars movie as it made its way towards the horizon. When it got within 10 kilometres of the ground, it let out a parachute, a radio uh, reflective parachute. That helped the team on the ground at Mission Control here in Woomera track the device as it uh, sort of descended towards Earth. And then the big search was on to find that capsule. And Sarah, space missions don't always succeed, so how remarkable is it that everything went so well? That's the thing. It is, it is pretty remarkable that everything so far has gone to plan. One of my favourite moments from the weekend was during a Japanese press conference um, back in Woomera. And the Japanese media were quite concerned about all the possibility, I guess the possibility of things going wrong. Because if things do go wrong, you've then got a space object flying towards Earth uh, and who knows where it's going to land. They asked, uh, they asked JAXA, who were behind this whole mission, what would happen if when Hayabusa 2 was asked to eject the space capsule, what happens if it doesn't release? And their response, was we'll just press the button uh, again and then we'll just keep pressing that button. Luckily, they didn't need to keep pressing the button. Uh, it, did, it did all work. But, yeah, it's pretty amazing that things have gone to plan. Today they're going to be um, extracting gas from the capsule. By If they find gas inside the capsule, that means there is indeed an asteroid sample inside the capsule. They're, they're going to be putting it on a charter flight uh, probably tomorrow, early this week, and they'll be flying it directly back to Japan. And when it once it's on home soil, it will finally be opened. I am so jealous, Sarah. I had to get in on the couch. Uh, you got up early, saw this amazing fireball, and it was just from this tiny little capsule. It doesn't have much on board, does it? I know the Hayabusa, the original, only delivered a few micrograms of, of sample. A bit more this time. Yeah, just a gram of uh, space dust and rocks. It was taken from asteroid Ryugu. It took three and a half years to get from Earth just to the asteroid. They then landed on that asteroid twice and they drilled down into the surface. The reason this mission was particularly exciting was because it was the first time they ever managed to take part of an asteroid from below the surface. So by drilling, they got that dust, they then picked it up and they've taken it all the way back. Nate, I know that you really wanted to be here. Um, so I've been lucky enough to get this space patch. I did say earlier that I was going to post it to you because what it means is if you have this official Hayabusa 2 patch it means you're kind of an astronaut well that's what I think anyway <laughs> but you know what I'm going to highest bidder Michael Lisa if you want to compete for it oh. um, I'll post it to her oh. Oh. <laughs> that's not wow. fair that's not fair Off I reckon I reckon you should keep it Sarah it's all right <laughs> but um uh, I, I, I am so incredibly jealous and uh, Sarah used to be a news breakfast producer so at least you're prepared for the early morning start hey I know. So when I set my alarm for 2.15, everyone's like, oh, so early. And I was like, look, the team at News Breakfast <laughs> wake up uh, before then every morning. I think Lisa's alarm goes off at 3. So, you know, I, it's, it was a walk in the park for me. And <laughs> the only issue was I did have to put makeup on this time because I had to go on camera, which was a real debacle. Mm. So I now have an understanding of what Lisa and Michael go through <laughs> every morning. But I tell you what, waking up at 1 in the morning to report for News Breakfast, it's worth it. And to see a space event like this, it's also definitely worth it. 100%. Yeah, we really appreciate your reporting. Sarah Mullins, thank you very much.